So, in less time than you normally spend browsing for a movie to watch, I'm going to tell you about 20 near-perfect movies you can currently catch on HBO Max. So HBO Max has been one of my favorite streaming services since they launched. They have the most excellent movies available on any streaming service, including Netflix. This video is sponsored by Every Plate, and I'll be telling you more about them later in the video, but right now I want to tell you about my number 20 pick on this list, which is actually an HBO Max original movie, The Survivor. This is the true story of Harry Haft, a Jewish-American boxer who is actually a Holocaust survivor. He's played by Ben Foster in this movie, who does an incredible job, per usual, but the story here is that he was actually forced to fight in the concentration camps, and it's to the death in most cases, making this an exceptionally brutal movie. Now, this is directed by Barry Levinson, so the way that it was directed is not overly brutal or upsetting, but the story itself is so gut-wrenching. It's mostly told through flashbacks, but my goodness, what a harrowing story. And for a movie that was directly released on a streaming service, this is an incredible production. I mean, Ben Foster lost an insane amount of weight for this. The supporting cast is absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is a top-notch production that just didn't get a lot of recognition in 2021. As typical with these lists, we cover a wide range of genres. My next pick being an early movie from director Guillermo del Toro, Mimic. Um, do you have the time? So the time? Now this is one of his more popcorn style movies. It is a horror movie, but it is fairly accessible, yet incredibly creepy. If you've got any sort of fear of roaches or bugs, this is not gonna be the movie for you. But because it's Del Toro, he really elevated this sort of creature feature style movie. It's got some fantastic production design. I mean, just sets and things that look absolutely amazing for a movie in this genre. This is probably my favorite Mira Servino movie, and you get a little role from Josh Brolin actually playing a guy named Josh. This movie goes into some wild directions, but always stays really grounded. Again, in terms of creature features released in the 90s, this is easily one of the best. Also released in 1997, one of the funniest comedies of the 90s, certainly one of the funniest to come out of Britain, The Full Monty. This movie was an instant global sensation back when it was originally released. Despite the fact that it features a really quintessential English sense of humor, if you've never seen this, it's about a group of guys who are not just down on their luck, they've all lost their jobs due to factories leaving their town and a whole host of problems. And so they decide in order to raise money, they're going to do a male only striptease show and it's hilarious these are all guys who are middle-aged who are not particularly proud of their bodies or their ability to dance or show off yet they sort of band together to pull this thing off and it's really actually kind of a heartwarming story has loads of really funny moments that still hold up today because most of the jokes are not really topical or anything they're things i think most people men and women can identify with and above all else it's just funny as all hell from scene to scene now this is a list of near perfect movies, so there's gonna be quite a few on this list that you've heard of. However, my next pick is easily one of the least known movies on this list. It stars Christopher Plummer in Remember. Now this is not based on a true story, but here Christopher Plummer does play a Holocaust survivor who was actually sent out to kill a few people on a kill list. These are either ex-Nazis or people involved with the Holocaust, but the catch here is that he is a very old man and his memory is beginning to slip, making this a very difficult mission for him to pull off. This has some moments of high drama. It's mostly talking, fantastic supporting cast, and with an actor like Christopher Plummer at the helm, he really does carry this thing and make it work, even though it is done on a much lower budget than movies he's typically in, and frankly, lower budget than most of the movies on this list, but yet yeah, it still manages to be an insanely compelling drama. Now we're going to go back almost a quarter of a century to the year 2000 for a highly underrated horror movie with a top-notch cast, top-tier director, What Lies Beneath. What do you want?
Now, this is actually directed by Robert Zemeckis, who's most famous for Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, Contact, and a whole bunch of other movies. Like I said, top tier director. This is one of the only true horror movies he's ever done. And honestly, for a PG-13 horror movie, what Lies Beneath is incredibly effective. That means there's not really any big gore or anything too mature in this movie. However, it manages to sink its hooks in deep. And for a horror flick, it's fairly long. It's over two hours and has lots of twists and turns, plus a top-notch cast with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer both doing killer work. Like I said, near perfect. I'm honestly surprised this movie hasn't developed more of a cult following over the years, but who knows? It's kind of been forgotten. Still makes a top-notch watch on HBO Max, though. George Clooney makes the list with what I think is easily one of his best and most underrated movies, Michael Clayton. For such a smart person, you really are lost, aren't you? This conversation is over. I'm not the guy that you kill. I'm the guy that you buy. Are you so f***ing blind you don't even see what I am? This too is just a top-notch drama. The synopsis sounds incredibly dry, but George Clooney is doing top-notch work. Tilda Swinton is doing some of her best work. Tom Wilkinson is easily giving the best performance of his career. And this isn't quite corporate espionage, but it definitely is tomfoolery with the legal system, and it feels very authentic and realistic. It takes a little while for this one to get started, but once it gets going, it really gets going, especially for a movie that is essentially just people talking in rooms. And I think it's because it was directed incredibly well for a movie like this, and again, all of the performances are just top-notch on top of them being incredibly interesting characters. I mean, honestly, Clooney's character is the least interesting in the whole story. That's not a knock against him, that's just how interesting all of the other characters are in Michael Clayton. My next pick is a comedy that features one of the all-time greats, Paul Giamatti, in Sideways. Nice shot. Jack offs. What the hell are you doing? Oh, oops! <laughs> Look out! This is another movie that was kind of a cultural phenomenon when it came out. Everyone was talking about this movie, especially for a movie about a couple of guys that just go on a trip to wine country. Everyone was checking this one out, regardless of how interested you were in wine at the time. Just like the full Monty, we've got a couple of middle-aged men still trying to figure their lives out in sideways. Again, something I think a lot of people can identify with. Story and direction-wise, Sideways does a fantastic job of getting you interested in this wine country trip. Again, if you have zero interest in wine, Sideways will get you interested in it. But above that, Paul Giamatti's character and his performance really suck you into this guy's life and current predicament, and it manages to work incredibly well. For a movie of this type, again, this one is just near perfect. It's got twists, turns, it's got some high drama, and some just absolutely hilarious moments that still hold up today. My next pick is one of the most action-packed movies on this list, and it's based on a true story, Lone Survivor. Hey, Mikey. I'm all ready to punch that time card. Do it. Now this is one that was a big hit back when it came out, but has kind of been forgotten with time. Yet I still think this was expertly directed by Peter Berg. He does a lot of action movies, some of them pretty good, but here in Lone Survivor, the movie is patient up front, and then once it pops off, it really doesn't stop and it kind of walks the line between glorifying the action and telling the actual true story of these guys, most of them who died during this skirmish, I guess we'll call. Mark Wahlberg's the lead here, but there's a really fantastic supporting cast. I like almost all the actors working in this and they're all doing fantastic work. And like I said, the movie feels pretty realistic. I mean, yes, it does have some over the top movie action in it, but for the most part, this one stays fairly grounded, at least when it comes to the impact of this overall event. It can be an intense watch because it doesn't stop, but again, just the way that this one's directed was just near perfect. My next pick is also a wartime movie, but this one actually comes from 1953 and is a classic for some folks, but I think a lot of people probably still haven't seen The Wages of Fear. Now this was remade as a TV movie in 1977. It was called Sorcerer. That is a fantastic flick as well, but in the Wages of Fear, a group of men are tasked with transporting nitroglycerin 
across a bumpy road in order to help extinguish a fire happening at a local mine. They do not have all the equipment they need to make this journey safe. In fact, it is a suicide mission. So once you get past the initial setup with the Wages of Fear, it turns into a suspenseful ride all the way through. You've got this group of guys transporting containers that are likely to blow up at every single turn and bump they make along the way, and it is just expertly executed. You are gonna have a hard time going back to 1953 and finding me a movie packed with more tension than The Wages of Fear. If that sounds like you, this is a fantastic pick, but do know it is mixed language. Everyone's sort of speaking their native language in this movie. So while there is some English, there's also French, German, Italian, you name it, it's in this movie. And then my next pick is one of the newer releases on this list, and the reason it makes a list of near-perfect movies is because this is not really my type of movie, but my goodness, was it expertly directed, and it was expertly directed by none other than Bradley Cooper. Yes, believe it or not, A Star is Born makes the list, and it was Bradley Cooper's first time in the director's chair. Now, it is my understanding that sometimes when big famous actors direct movies, they get a lot of help, but he's got another movie on the way, so we're likely to find out pretty soon whether this was a fluke or whether or not this guy is really a fantastic actor and director. And I know this movie has been remade several times, and that's kind of the point. I think the way that Bradley Cooper attacked this movie in modern day is pretty fantastic, not only with the casting of Lady Gaga, which I think she did a killer job, but just the look and feel of this movie, the supporting cast. I mean, Andrew Dice Clay has a small role in this movie, and he is absolutely fantastic. I feel like most, if not all, of the decisions made to produce this movie were spot on turning A Star is Born into a movie that I absolutely love, despite the fact that, again, this is really not my type of movie. Now, before talking about the top 10 movies on this list, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Every Plate. Over the past few months, I've been saving money by using Every Plate instead of doing takeout, and I'm still getting these fast, easy, and delicious meals. Every Plate is a meal subscription service that actually lets you choose from 25 different meals that rotate out every single week so you'll never get bored, and then they deliver the fresh ingredients directly to your door in the exact amounts you need. I don't have to do any grocery shopping, and I'm not wasting money over buying ingredients that I don't need in order to cook these fantastic meals. This past week being, I think, the most delicious food I've had from this service yet. I made these incredible little pork flautas. I've never made flautas before. They turned out great. They were really delicious. But my goodness, this burger. It was so good, I made it again because the ingredients were so simple. Every plate showed me how to make this incredibly simple garlic mayo and these caramelized onions that were unbelievable on this burger, I'm telling you. But aside from the delicious food, the thing that really sets every plate apart is their reasonable pricing. They're not wasting your time with organic stuff you don't need or fancy ingredients. Again, these are easy, simple, fun recipes to cook, and the price is incredibly low. In fact, my viewers right now, when you go to the link in the description and use my code FLICK149, you're gonna pay as low as $1.49 per meal on your first every plate order. I also appreciate how fun and easy these recipes are to cook. They're usually just about six steps or so and only take about 30 minutes to put together, again, a restaurant quality meal that cost a fraction of what you would pay for takeout. So again, go to that link in the description, use my code, get that fantastic discount. But for now, let's move on with the top 10 movies on this list. All right, if I've not recommended anything that's high drama enough for you yet, my next pick is based on a true story that captivated the entire world, Captain Phillips. Hey, don't get in there! Gotta get him off the ship! Not like this! Now, not only does this feel incredibly realistic as it's unfolding on screen, Tom Hanks is giving some of his best work in years in this movie, but it's also directed by Paul Greengrass. Greengrass is probably most famous for the Bourne Ultimatum, but he really does nail this fast-paced, situational type of action movie. I mean, Captain Phillips feels like chaos, despite the fact that you know it's a movie and everything's very meticulously planned out. 
Greengrass brings these situations to life in a way that nobody else does. And I think he was the perfect director to tell this particular story. This too was really hot back when it came out. Everyone made a big deal of the Somali pirate that did a fantastic performance and has kind of been forgotten. But this movie does actually still hold up even when you know and understand how it unfolds. Greengrass just winds this thing up in a perfect way and it makes for a really intense watch. If you've only seen it the one time, Captain Phillips is more rewatchable than you would think. My next pick is actually another high seas action drama that I think is insanely underrated, Master and Commander. This is a fictional story that takes place during the Napoleonic Wars. Russell Crowe is the captain of a British naval ship in pursuit of a French ship halfway around the world. Now this is a fictional story, but a lot of what unfolds is all based on different true stories sort of cobbled together to tell this one. While it's not a historically accurate story, my understanding is most of the stuff you see on and around the ship is historically accurate, making Master and Commander one of the greatest movies to take place on an old wooden ship ever made. What I love about this movie is how real and authentic everything feels. I mean, this is just top-notch stuff. I will say it is fairly violent. There's quite a bit of action and it's PG-13 rated, which is not a bad thing. I don't think it holds the movie back in any kind of way, but I do think it might be what prevented this from having sort of a bigger impact back when it was released. This too is well over two hours and while the Naval battles in this movie are really far and away the best part of the entire movie. Everything else that happens is fantastic. It really is an incredible story. And again, it gets near perfect points for just looking absolutely authentic and top notch. Now, my next pick on this list is kind of a horror movie slash thriller. It is one I have recommended on this channel strongly for years, but probably haven't talked about in the last two years or so. Green Room. In this movie, a punk band takes a show at this white supremacist hangout out in the woods, something they will come to regret very quickly. In fact, after the show, as soon as they get back to the green room, they witness something that they definitely should have, and they are not allowed to leave said green room. This is a terrifying story that feels incredibly realistic. The way that it's shot is very much like a horror movie. If you don't handle gore well, do not watch Green Room. I will say though, this movie is not really over the top. It's not a gore fest. It is just intense as all get out when it wants to be. This too, expertly directed, winds tension up really well. Anton Yelkin is the lead here. It's one of the last movies he did before he died, and it is a total banger. Not to mention the fact that Patrick Stewart plays the villain in this movie and does an insane job playing a bad guy. It's something I wish he did more often. There are currently a couple of Christopher Nolan movies included with HBO Max, and I struggled a little bit as to which one to put on here, but I decided to leave Memento off this list of near perfect movies because I think that movie is just about perfect and I went with one of his more underrated movies, Insomnia. Now at this point in Christopher Nolan's career, Insomnia actually feels the least like his work, yet it is still a top notch thriller. If you've never seen it, Al Pacino plays a homicide detective sent to a small Alaskan town where a teenage girl was killed. It also happens to be around the time where the sun never sets and he's unable to sleep, making his investigative job even more difficult. Now this is a fantastic murder mystery movie, yet it lacks some of the twists and turns and mind fuckery that you typically get with a Christopher Nolan movie, which I'm fine with because this movie does not need it. Obviously Al Pacino does a great job, but Robin Williams, I know he's a great actor, he's done great work for years. He is playing a villain in this movie in such a delicate, fantastic way. It doesn't just carry the movie, it's really the icing on the cake with Insomnia and it's kind of what makes it near perfect. Okay, I've got another war movie on this list, but this time we're going back to 1967 with The Dirty Dozen. Look, you little bastard, either you march or I'll beat your brains out, understand? No. 
Now, fans of Inglorious Bastards, if you've never seen The Dirty Dozen, you owe it to yourself to watch this movie. Trust me, this is not a recommendation, it is a prescription. And not only does this have a lot in common with Inglorious Bastards, but it stars Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine, Charles Bronson, in an insane story about these criminals sent in to kill a bunch of Nazis. It is fairly violent for 1967, but keep in mind, it's 1967. It's not going to come close to Inglorious Bastards on the violence meter, but the story is absolutely fantastic, and The Dirty Dozen is kind of fun to watch. You wouldn't quite call this a comedy, but it comes close at times. Now, this is two and a half hours. It does take quite a while to get going. In fact, most of the movie is them preparing for this mission, but the mission itself is absolutely fantastic. Most people watching this video will love it. If you give yourself a chance to get into the story from the get-go, it really is fantastic, especially if you've got two and a half hours to kill, and it's been a while since you've seen a killer 1960s war movie. My next pick is also a war movie. I'm not sure if you can quite call it modern warfare though, because it did take place 30 years ago now, Black Hawk Down. Now the movie itself was released in 2001 and was almost perfectly directed by Ridley Scott, but the events actually took place in 1993 in Somalia. There's a book, there's a documentary that cover this actual event, and the movie represents the true story pretty damn well. They end up going a little too Hollywood for my taste towards the end, which is what keeps this from being a perfect pick. But for the most part, they follow the true events, even if they change the order of things to sort of keep the story moving. They're still representing what these soldiers went through. The movie itself feels like it's unfolding in real time. I mean, it's a longer time frame than the two hour runtime, but it still feels like it's moving along in real time and yet you're with the actors as they're going through this. And it's all fantastic actors as well, including Tom Sizemore, who just recently died. This is easily one of the most intense movies on this list because once the intensity starts, it doesn't quit. Another movie that absolutely holds up if it's been a while since you've seen it. It's one of my favorites in this genre. And then we'll lighten things up quite a bit with my next pick, a real crowd pleaser, Little Miss Sunshine. You know what a loser is? A real loser is somebody that's so afraid of not winning, they don't even try. Now you're trying, right? Yeah. Well, then you're not a loser. I still remember seeing this movie in the theater, and what I love about it is how rich every single character in the story is, from the grandpa to the son, played by Paul Dano, Tony Collette as the mother, Steve Carell as the suicidal uncle, and Abigail Breslin probably giving the performance of her entire career. We'll see. But Little Miss Sunshine does a fantastic job of dancing with some heavy themes and levity at the same time, meaning it's funny all the way through, yet they're still addressing not some overly heavy themes, but like I said, Steve Carell is a suicidal uncle. His wrists are taped up the whole time. Everyone's sort of expressing things that frustrate them about their lives, yet the whole family sort of manages to come together in this way that just is not obvious. It's got one hell of an ending for a movie like this, and it's just highly rewatchable. The situations this family gets into on this road trip just make for a fantastic watch the first time and the fifth, sixth, seventh time you watch it. Al Pacino makes the list again with the first movie I picked out when putting together this list. A personal favorite of mine from the 70s, Dog Day Afternoon. My priest! Nobody move! Get over there! Okay. All right, get away from those alarms. In this movie, Al Pacino and John Cassell, who actually played Sal in the Godfather movies, decide to rob a bank and it does not go well at all. This is essentially a hostage negotiation style movie and it's one of the first, it's certainly one of the first to do it this way. It feels incredibly realistic as it unfolds. There's been quite a few movies very much like this that have come out over the years. In fact, Inside Man would be a more recent one, but Dog Day Afternoon is one of the best in this genre. This is also based on a true story that I think easily could have been forgotten. Like I said, it's a bank heist gone wrong. 
things don't work out, yet the way that it was approached and the messages and the things that get delivered to you along the way are all killer, making this a really seminal film from 1975. It's one that holds up still today. In fact, I would say The French Connection and Dog Day Afternoon were really my introduction into the movies of the 70s. Now, I've got a big sci-fi movie on this list, and when I say big, it is a smaller independent movie, but it was a big release back when it came out. A lot of people love this movie, but I think a lot of people don't really appreciate how near perfect Ex Machina actually is. This building isn't a house. It's a research facility. And I want to talk to you about what I'm researching. Now, this movie sort of prides itself on its big twist ending, which is fantastic, but the reason it makes the list is because of how nuanced and perfect all the little scenes are. This too features a lot of scenes of people just talking, but they're so delicately written and directed by Alex Garland, and they needed to be in order for that big reveal to actually work towards the end. It's a reveal you almost anticipate and see coming from the jump with this movie, yet the movie manages to play this sleight of hand trick that is effective even though I'm telling you it's going to happen. If you've seen the movie, you probably know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, trust me, I have not spoiled Ex Machina. The title does not spoil Ex Machina. It still manages to work, which is what I think is so damn near perfect about it. On top of it just raising the really interesting questions about AI and the advancement of technology, things that had been explored to death in sci-fi movies, and Ex Machina took a slightly different point of view that just worked beautifully. Now, before telling you about my number one pick, there are a lot of near-perfect or perfect movies on HBO Max right now. It's easily my favorite streaming service because of how many solid picks they have. Here are some other fantastic picks that did not make this list. Most of them didn't make the list because they are perfect. But out of everything I could have picked from on HBO Max right now, my number one pick actually comes from 1954, Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. Now, don't click off the video because you don't like old black and white movies. Just hear me out for one minute. Yes, it is a three and a half hour Japanese language movie, but it is the three and a half hour Japanese language movie to watch. If you watch one true blue samurai movie ever in your life, this is the one to watch. Not only did it influence tons of samurai movies that would come after it. It influenced American Westerns almost directly. I mean, really, The Magnificent Seven is a remake of Seven Samurai. It is the same story, and as much as I love the American Western, again, with killer cast members like Yul Brenner, Charles Bronson, Steve McQueen, love that movie. Seven Samurai is the superior film, and not just because Akira Kurosawa put the camera in the right place all the time. The storytelling is fantastic. For 1954, the characters are insanely rich and layered, and the movie teaches you about this time period in Japan incredibly well, it represents it very well, and is just a wild introduction into the world of samurai. It's violent, it's epic, it's insanely heroic at times, and I'm telling you, is miles better than the Western American remakes, even though those are fantastic movies as well, which is why this earned the number one spot on this list. But that is the list. Thanks again to Every Plate for sponsoring another video. I really do enjoy this service. Go check out that link in the description to get that discount. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this HBO Max episode, and you will see me on the next one.